Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Genesis tonight, please. In Genesis chapter 1. And for a few weeks, we're going to be dealing with the creation. Praise God. The actual creation itself. Okay? So... Then from there, we'll probably get into the spiritual application. We'll see how it goes. We may do it both at the same time. We may just do creation and then go to the spiritual application of it. But anyway, praise God, we'll cover a lot of material. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. Praise God. Okay, before I read, how many of y'all remember the decrees? The first lesson we talked about was what? The decrees of God. Y'all remember the decrees of God? Y'all remember them? He decreed, number one, that He is going to create a universe. Number two, He is going to place man in that universe. Number three, He has decreed that He would permit sin. Number four, He decreed that He would destroy sin by Calvary. Number five, He decreed that those that believe the gospel the biblical definition of believing would be saved. And number six, he decreed those that rejected that gospel would be lost. Y'all need to remember those decrees. Those are divine decrees of God concerning creation. Okay? Uh, Then we talked about before the beginning last week. We found out that we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. We explained that to you, that there is predestination. God has predestined a destiny for us. But we got have to get on that destination. We have to get on that road that leads to that destination. So anyway, if you weren't here for that, you need to get that tape. All right. Now we're going to begin with creation. So we're basically for two weeks, we've been dealing with before creation. Okay. Now we're going to deal with creation itself. So verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Your Bible has heaven. But it's, it can be either way, single or um, plural. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmaments, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called He seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after His kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, 
And every wing fell after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. He rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his works which God created and made. Let's lift our hands and worship him and love him. Lord, we love you tonight and we worship you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift up our voices in praise and thanksgiving and adoration, Lord God. You're my God, my Savior and my King. I'm so thankful tonight, Lord God, for all that you have done for us, all that you have done for me personally, God. I thank you for this great salvation that you have provided for us, God. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost in us and upon us, God, tonight. We thank you for your awesome word, God, tonight. You're an awesome God, and we thank you for speaking to us, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everybody give the Lord a hand clap of praise, please. Amen. You may be seated. I've <clears throat> got a few things written up here on the board for you. I'm going to get into a lot of uh, creation scientist facts tonight. I'm going to share things from you that, that, are, that come from some of the greatest creation scientists that are alive. I believe that we're living in a day right now that, has, that is producing some of the greatest creation scientists who have ever lived. And we're blessed to have them. So I'm going to share things with you tonight that's going to be basically creation. It's going to deal with science. How many of you know true science is all right? It's a good thing. But bad science, when God's not in it, is not a good thing. But... True science is good. We're going to have uh, the Word of God as the base of our authority, but science is going to back up everything it says. True science. How many of you believe in evolution tonight? How many of you believe that the earth is billions? There was one man, Carl Sagan, he was an atheist. He used to have a program, he said, billions and billions and billions of years ago. Yeah. How many of y'all believe that the earth is billions and billions and billions and billions of years old? How many of y'all believe the universe is billions of years old? Or how many of y'all believe tonight that it's relatively young? How many care? Well, that's good. That's good. There's a theory called evolution. And for so long, people take the Bible, they try to make the Bible fit into the evolutionary theory, and they teach what is called evolutionary creationism. They believe that God did create it, the earth and the universe, but He used the evolutionary process to do it. That's not in the Bible. 
That is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches, he tells us that he did it at a specific time. And he did it very quickly. In, a, in one week's time, actually six days time, in less, than, in less than a week, he created everything. So that these days are not long periods or long ages of thousands of years. They are 24-hour days that we read about here, right here. So in six days, I read to you chapter 1, in six days God had created the heavens and the earth, the universe, in six 24-hour days. Do you believe that? So He didn't use the evolutionary process over thousands and millions and billions of years. He just said, let there be, and there was. He spoke it into existence, and it came into being. Go to John 1. The Bible says in Genesis 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The word create means there was no material. No material. Nothing. God created something out of nothing. How did He do that? He spoke it into existence. He did it by His Word. He brought nothing or something out of nothing. There was nothing. God, that was it. You with me? God has no beginning. You understand that? So God's always been here. He's eternal. But when there, a beginning began, there was nothing there but God. And He just said, let there be, and out of nothing came something. Now that's powerful. Go to John 1. Let's see, alright, Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We found out last week, who was who is God? What is the New Testament? Who... Who does the New Testament say that created the earth? It says Jesus created it, right? In the New Testament, so we know He's God, right? Okay, John chapter 1. Let me read this to you. Genesis 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now look at what John says about the beginning. In the beginning was what? The Word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word. So the Word and God are exactly the same. They are the same. Do you understand that? Okay. All right, let me get there. John 1 and 1. Has everybody got your Bibles open there? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. So you take it back to Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So we see that uh, the Word is God. Now what happens in verse 14? The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus Christ was the God who created, in the beginning, the heavens and the earth. One God. You understand that? Praise the Lord. Now another, another question I want you to think about. Do you all believe in a gap theory? In the gap theory. Let me explain that to you. Look at Genesis 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Please look at your Bibles, okay? I'm going to share something that's very important to you. Notice it says, And the earth was without form. Some people translate the word was as became. So that Genesis 1.1 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All right, then verse 2 it says, And the earth was without form. It said, they teach it became that way. Okay? So if you look up here on this chart, do you see this original earth right here? All right. They say, they teach based on some chapters like in Isaiah 45. talks about God did not create the earth to be empty. So they say, then God created the earth in its original condition perfectly. And that the earth became chaotic. It became empty. It became void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep because of the, some uh, catastrophe that took place, some judgment of God upon the planet. You understand that? 
All right? This is the result, they say, of the fall of Lucifer. Have y'all ever heard that theory? So that the original earth, they say, man, it's been here for billions and billions and billions of years, and it's ages before you get to this chaotic condition. You understand that? I don't believe it. I know that the angels fell. God cast them out. They sinned. They rebelled. God cast them to the earth. But there is not a billions of year gap between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. I'm going to show you. It doesn't say it became that way. It says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. It didn't say it became that way. It says it was that way. So what you see then is, in this teaching of this catastrophe taking place, no telling how many billions of years ago, then we had this chaotic, or the original earth billions of years ago, then we had this chaotic condition that each one of these days is a recreation of the original perfect earth. They teach that instead of saying that each one of these days are, uh, it's a restoration going on or a recreation instead of a creation going on. I don't believe that. The Bible says the word was there. You'll notice it talks about, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the sea. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day. And the darkness he called night in the evening and the morning were the first day. Are you with me? You see that little word was? That is a connecting word chronologically. That everything you happen, Genesis 1-1 happens. Genesis 1-2 follows it immediately. Genesis 1-3 follows Genesis 1-2 immediately. It's not separated by billions of years. And each one of these days are not the recreation of the earth. It's the actual creation process. So that when God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created this earth. You with me? And it was chaotic at the time He created it. He is a futuristic God. He created it at this level, at this stage. But He wasn't going to leave it there. He didn't leave it in that condition of chaos without form and empty. He didn't leave it that way. In seven or six literal 24-hour days, He took a chaotic earth that He created and He made it what it was in the times of Adam and Eve. Are y'all with me? Are you with me? Why did, see, now God can, He could have just said, let there be and everything come into existence perfectly. With one word. He didn't have to use these literal 24 hour days to create this earth. Why did He do that? Because He's got a plan. He's got a purpose. He's going to show you the end from the beginning. You understand that? That's why He did it. God can do anything, but He's got a plan and He's got a purpose. So He does a certain thing on the first day. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Right? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of what? The waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. This is all happening in the first day. Verses 1 through 3 are actually, really you take that first day on when it talks about light. Uh, you take it on down. In verse 5. You see that? And God called the light day, the darkness He called night. The evening and the morning were what? The first day. So everything from verses 1 through 5, in my understanding, happened on the first 24-hour day. God didn't stretch it out over billions of years. 
And then this next day, he said, this is what I'm going to do the next day. And then the third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, he did it. Doom, doom, doom. Just like that, in less than six days, little days, he created it. Now, why did God do this? Because God is a God of love. And his whole Bible, the, the Bible you carry in your hands, is a love story. It is a love story. It is a divine romance. He created the earth. Number one, why? For His glory. Number two, that He might have a church. That He might have a bride. And you're going to see that. It's going to take... I'm not going to get in a hurry in Genesis. I'm going to take my sweet time. Because you need to understand why God created the heavens and the earth was that there could be a bride. He made a man in his image so that he could have an image and so that he could have a bride and Eve standing beside that image. That is why God created it. It's a divine romance story. It's a divine love story that he would have somebody in his image and he would have a bride. Okay? And I'm telling you, it gets, it gets pretty good. <sighs> Praise the Lord. But I just want to show you the creation process first. Is everybody with me? So now if you believe differently, then you, you know, the burden of proof is on you to prove it. That this is the original earth and it was billions of years ago. And then we have the chaotic earth because of the fall. You understand that? You got to prove that. I can tell you that because years back, I used to believe that theory. Praise the Lord. But you have to keep studying. You have to keep digging. You have to find out what the truth is. You with me? Isn't God good? Okay. How many of y'all believe God created the heavens and the earth? You have faith, right? Hallelujah. He's just, he's just so awesome. And He is so in love. You could ever understand how much He loves and how, how good He is and how awesome He is and why He's done everything. All you can do is love Him back. That's all you can do. When I get, you know, I'm telling you, when I got through, hallelujah. You know, God's so awesome. My problem is, I, I, there's so many directions we can go with this that I really don't know where to go. <laughs> Praise God. So I was up about 3 o'clock last night working on one area, and then I always went to sleep. And then today I started studying another area, and I, okay, well, I'll just put that over here on the back shelf here, and we'll just talk about creation tonight. Because I'm telling you, you need to understand how awesome God is in His creative power and His creative ability. And then we will explain to you why He did what He did the way He did it. See, God has one plan. He's always had one plan. He has never changed His plan. He's never changed His purpose. See, God is not a God who reacts. See, we react. If I'm having a bad, don't talk to me. I'm, I, you know, a bad day. I'm having a bad day. Don't talk to me. That's reaction. But see, God is not like that. He doesn't react. You know, if He was a God that reacted, well, He created the earth and all... Oh. The devils, the demons, you know, the angels rebel against him. He throws them down. He reacts to that and creates a new sphere and creates man. Uh, and he, you know, man rebels. So God reacts to that. And so he raises up the nation of Israel. And Israel rebels against him. So God reacts to that. And come on. That's not the God I serve. He has one plan, one purpose, and He's never altered that plan. He knew the end from the beginning. All right? How many of y'all believe there's God, that God is the Creator? It ha there has to be a God. For somebody, you can make something, but you can't create. Not in the sense that God creates. 
which means taking nothing and making something out of it. You can take what God has already created and make something with it. And that is in a sense in the image of God, the ability to create. A dog can't create a table. We'll get into the image of, of God. We'll explain that to you. But I'm telling you, there had to be a God in order for something to come out of nothing. Where did it all come from? See, there's four basic questions that everybody has to ask. Number one, who am I? Number two, where am I? Are you here? Number three, where am I going? And number four, what is my purpose? Who am I? Where am I? Where am I going? And what is my purpose? And the only place you can find that answer is in this Holy Bible. The book of Genesis tells you the answer to every one of those questions. Who am I? Where am I? Where am I going? And what is my purpose? The only place you can find the answer is in the Bible. And philosophers try to find it in philosophy. And false religions try to find it in false religion. Come on, somebody. The only place you're going to find it is in the Word of God. Okay. So I'm going to show you something. God is the Creator, right? Hallelujah. We're just going to have Sunday school. Some of y'all go to school right now, and you, you know, there's people teach you evolution. You're going to want to take notes. Okay? God is the Creator, which means He is the I got the cause, but He is literally the first cause of all things. Do you understand? And in order for there to be a creation, there had to be somebody behind that creation, causing that creation. And God is that first cause of creation. Alright, look. Is there not space? In the beginning, God created the heavens. That's the space, right? Right? In order for there to be space, there has to be an infinite God that is bigger than that space. We talked about that, right? That God is bigger than space. I'm not going to repeat myself. All right? In order for there to be unending time, there has to be an eternal being in duration. There has to be a God who caused that unending time to be in existence. So that means that He's eternal. Say perpetual motion. In order for you to have perpetual motion, there has to be a God who is very powerful, not just very powerful, but omnipotent. Which means He keeps everything moving and He keeps everything going. If it wasn't for God, what would be keeping everything moving? Would it just be happening on its own? The, the earth spinning on its own? The, the orbits of the planets taking place on their own? Come on, you've got to know better than that. In order for there to be perpetual motion, there has to be a very, uh, not a very, but an omnipotent power behind it. Causing that perpetual motion, that continual motion to take place. Look at all the variety in the world. Have you ever noticed how beautiful God's creation is? Oh, all the different colors. All the trees, all, you got flat land, some part of the world, beautiful seas and oceans and you know, big mountains in other parts of the world. Say variety. For you to have that variety means there has to be an omnipresent God that is in the phenomena of that variety. Let me say it again. In order for you to have variety, you have to have an omnipresent God in the phenomenon of that variety. See, I love God. God is a God of variety. He's not a dull God. He's not a... See, if you could ever know Him. All right? The complexity of things. For things to be as complex as they are, 
There has to be a cause behind that complexity. Right? What is the cause behind that complexity? There has to be an omniscient God. Somebody that knows everything about everything. Who doesn't even have to think about trying to understand. He just understands without even trying. He doesn't labor to get knowledge. He knows everything. So for us to have the complexity that we've got, there has to be this omniscient God who knows everything and put all that complexity together. Ooh, hallelujah. See, evolution is a lie. It's a theory. It's not only a theory, it is a religion. <laughs> it wasn't the Big Bang. It was the Big Word. God said, let there be. That's a big word. That's what caused it to happen. It wasn't because of big bang and God used the evolutionary process. No, ma'am, no way. He said, this is the way it is in a specific period of time. And it happened that way. It didn't evolve into anything. I'm going to prove it to you. When God created the dog, he created the dog full grown. When God created the trees, the trees were already full grown. They didn't evolve. The Bible said they had seed within them. Kind, kind, kind. I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that when God got through with the creation, that it's just, come on, in its trees, it's all the pretty trees, the big trees, the, the animals and their sizes. That's the way it was when He got through. He did not use evolution. He used His awesome Word. Now look, these are just looking on the outward of things. You have to have. You have to have this. There has to be a cause and effect. Right? Did your car just come together? The one you drive? Somebody, there was a cause behind that thing operating and running. Right? Okay, let's look at the inward. Look, you never say we're going to look inside. We're going to look at you. I'm going to look at you and you're going to look at me. All right? Inwardly. How many of y'all... Are persons. Are you a person? You ask yourself, who am I? Well, I'm a person. I have the ability to know who I am. I have the ability to know where I'm going. I have the ability to know where I am. And I have the ability to know my purpose. Come on. See, I want to tell you so much, but anyway, we well, got to stay here. I might be finished in 10 minutes and you get to go home. Look at this. How many persons do I have in the house? Yeah. Praise God. In order for there to be persons, there has to be a personal God who made that person. Right? Come on, that makes sense, right? How many of y'all have feelings? Sometimes you feel good. And sometimes you don't feel good. And sometimes you're happy. And sometimes you're sad. And sometimes you're angry. And sometimes you're mad. Sometimes, come on. Where'd you get all of this, uh, this ability to have all these emotions and all of these feelings? God is a God who is emotional. you got the ability to have emotions from your Creator. If there was no Creator, then you would not be a feeling person. How many of y'all have a wheel? Hmm. Oh God. I don't have to ask that question. I know everybody in this church has, you have your own will. Husbands don't have to ask their wives, you have your own will. They know you got your own will. 
The wife doesn't have to ask the husband. You got your will? They know. They Listen, you have a will. Then that means that the first cause, somebody also had to have a will. And that is God. God has a will. So in order for you to be able to have this will, you had to have somebody give it to you who had a will. All right, y'all with me? Everybody, come on, everybody to a certain extent has a, a system of values of some kind. You with me? Even this, the person in the world who doesn't know God has a system of ethics and value that they live by. Where did these people get this system of ethics? And I'm not saying it's always accurate ethics or proper ethics. But I'm saying that there's a system of ethics of some kind in every person. Where did they get that ability? Because God is a moral God. So when I look at you and I see you living out ethical things, doing things ethically, doing things right, then that tells me there had to be a God who is a moral God. Where'd you get the ability to sit on the inside of you and say, that's not right, this is wrong, and come on, this is wrong, this is right, this, come on, you with me? Where'd you get that ability to understand wrong and right? If there was no creator that gave it to you, everything would be right. But there's something inside of you that says, this isn't right, this is right. Where'd it come from? It came from God. Even if you're not regenerated tonight, you have that ability to say, that's not right. How many of y'all heard, hear the radio broadcast there once? Not our broadcast, but a, a little short commercials they had. And that philosopher, what's his name? Shami, the Shami. And, you know, he's got this philosophy. There's no right and wrong, you know, until somebody gets in his car and drives down the road. Hey, bring my car back. That's not right. The guy says, what are you talking about? You said there's no right and wrong. See, God is a moral God. You got that morality of wrong and right from God, even if you're not regenerated or not. There's some people in the world that live better than you do. That have better ethics than you do. Where did they get that? From the moral God that created them. See, man is in the image of God, but the image of God is marred after the fall. It's not what it was originally, but there's still that image of God that you can see even in the unregenerated person. Come on. All right, a system of religious desires. Most everybody worships something or someone. <clears throat> if it's an idol they made with their own hands, they bow down and they, where do they get this desire to worship? To be religious. Because God is spiritual. God is a spirit. So He placed inside of you the desire for spiritual things. Not just the material, but the spiritual things. God put it in you. He put it in the person that's unregenerated in the world. That's why they bow down to idols. But they're bowing down to the wrong God. God said, if I could just get them worshiping the right God. If I could just get Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees. Where he bows down to the moon God. Then I can show him that there's one God. And I'm that God. And then Abraham will worship me. He's just worshiping the wrong thing. Why was Abraham worshiping the wrong thing? Because God is a spiritual being. Come on. Say righteous. Righteous. Where do people get that rightness in certain degrees in them? Are you here? They got it from a holy God. He's holy. He's the first cause. So if I see any rightness in anybody, I can say, you know what? You're telling me that there's a God. 
And He's a righteous God. And He's a holy God. I can look at you. And the Bible says His creation declares that there is a God. And He's powerful. And there's only one God. All right? People justice. People crying for justice, you know? <laughs> and I'm not going to call names, but, you know, even, even some people, you know, oh, we got to revote, you know. <laughs> it's just not right, you know. And it's just not black or white. It's what's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, they scream justice. Even perverted. Why? Because God is a just God. I know I'm boring some of you. If you want to go on home, go ahead. I, I, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to teach you the word of the living God. How many of y'all love? Let me see that again. How many of y'all love? Well, how, where'd you get that ability to love? Well, the first cause, the one who created you, has to be a loving God. The one who made me is a God. The Bible says God is love. Hmm. How many of y'all are alive tonight? That's debatable in some of your cases, but if you've got a little life in you, then there's, that tells me the first cause is living. It has to be a living being. So the outward look and the inward look declares to me that God is the creator of the universe. That's the only way that you can have an answer for who you are, what you are, where you're going, and what your purpose is. God created the heavens and the earth. All right? Oh, hallelujah. Did that make you feel good? And when he was creating all this, he had you in mind. You're sitting right here tonight. He had you in mind. That's why he did it. So he could have an image and a bride. Okay. Now, how many of y'all know there's scientists out there? <laughs> Praise God. Science, so-called, falsely, false science, who try to disprove that God exists. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me tell you about this man. He's a Russian mathematician named Dr. Ray. Okay, you with me? USSR. This man was an atheist, but he is one of the most, the highest, one of the highest intelligent scientists that there is in the world in the area of mathematics. Come on, somebody. He got together with, his, with some other scientists. This is according to Dr. Carl Ball, all right? Dr. Carl Ball is one of the greatest science, creation scientists that is alive today. And he lives right here in Texas. He got a fax from this scientist, this mathematician from Russia. Come on. He thought he was a hoax, so he didn't call him back for three days. After three days, he said, I guess I'll just call this, call this man up and see what, what the deal is. Well... This scientist, this Russian scientist, one of the best in the world in the area of mathematics, he said that they got together with, he got together with some other scientists, and they sat down and put a formula, a mathematical formula to the creation of the world. Oh. The formula was eight pages long. Talking about some smart people. This <clears throat> scientist, mathematician, they were trying to disprove the existence of God by mathematical formulation. He got his eight page <laughs> formula done, took it to the scientist there in Russia, or USSR. 
they looked it over. They said, well, your formula is accurate. It's perfect. You didn't make any mistake in the mathemat mathematical formula. The problem is we don't like the conclusion of it. <clears throat> they gave it back to him. They said, Dr. Ray, go and refigure it. He did. He went, refigured it. He went back to him and he said, I haven't found anything wrong. <clears throat> we have to go by a strict guidelines. There, come on, he believes absolutes. We have to go by absolutes in math, he said. We have to follow these certain principles. And this is what I'm coming up with. He said, why don't you take the formula and see for yourself? They said, we already have. And they said, the formula is 100% accurate. But we just don't like the conclusion. And the conclusion that he came up with was that this earth, this universe, is a young universe. And he's an evolutionist who teach that the earth and universe is billions and billions and billions of years old so that the evolutionary process of man could come into existence. But mathematically, even the... Uh, even the atheist, who is a genius mathematician, said, we have come to the conclusion that the earth is a young earth. And number two, he said, we have come to the conclusion mathematically that it had to be designed. And we came to the conclusion, number three, that there had to be a designer behind the design. And not only that, see, this excites me. You know, because if you'd have been with me about six months ago when I was going through the Pentateuch in a college course and I had to write a paper and one of the questions was, how old is the earth? I just wrote down, I don't know, I wasn't there. <laughs> and I said, no, were you? You weren't either. <laughs> but I said, I, I think I can take biblical typology and prove a 6,000 year creation. I said, I believe I can, I can prove it that way. But I wasn't there. Turn my paper in, you know. But this scientist mathematically proved that when you go back, you go back 6,000 years and you reach to a time. Come on, listen to me. You go back 6,000 years and you move into a time in the 6,000th year of perfection. He said, it's a young earth. He said the minimum So it hasn't been here for billions and billions of years. And an evolutionist, an unbeliever, an atheist proved it by mathematics. Powerful. He said, Dr. Ball, he said, I'm glad that you called me back. I've been waiting three days for your call. He said, when I came to that conclusion, I'm no longer an atheist. I'm a believer. And you know what he said? He said, let me tell you the conclusion that I've come up with. Hallelujah. He said, I have come to the conclusion that the only way to be saved and get back connected to that God is through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. So now all you school people, you can go in there, man. You can talk to that professor now, boy. Just tell him, why don't you go study Dr. Ray's findings? The great mathematician of Russia. He found there's only, the earth is young. It had to have a designer. Come on. And now he's a believer. <laughs> Powerful. Isn't God good? <clears throat> All right, so I can find out who I am, where I am, <clears throat> where I'm going, and my purpose.
Well, I don't mean to. Hallelujah. Based in the Word of God. Are y'all excited? Y'all don't mind if I just do some teaching, do you? Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, brother. Next thing I want to talk to you about. This is a creationist. His name, oh, hallelujah. We did a little cerebral Christianity among us. We need some people who have answers among us. Not people who just walk around and walk in a little emotion all the time. We need some cerebral Christianity among us. We need some people that know what's going on and know their Bibles and know science. Well, we didn't have church if I didn't get a big old emotional thing, you know, and run around, you know, hallelujah. No, you need to get this. You need to understand some things about creation, right? See, if I can give you information, then you'll get your inspiration from that biblical information. That's why I teach you the Bible. I don't get up and tell you pretty little stories. Pretty little stories might inspire you. But where are you going to get your information? I'm going to build this work on the Word of God. And when I give you information, then you'll get your inspiration. And you'll be blessed tonight when you leave. So, Dr. Robert Gaines. Hallelujah, man. See, there's some smart people in the world that believe what you believe. Come on. There's some smart people sitting on these pews right here. Glory to God. I'm talking about geniuses, man. Dr. Robert Gange, he believes that God is the creator of the universe. Are you here? Are you ready? I'm almost through, believe it or not. Tell you the truth, man. Because what I'm telling you, I want you to go and I want you to meditate. I want you to think on. I want you to get in your cerebral. Say inorganic material. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Huh. Well, scientists who study God's creation, this man, Dr. Robert Gaines, says that inorganic material, that, are y'all listening very carefully? This bless me. Before I tell you about it, let me tell you how it blessed me. When I pick up my little child now, I look at my child differently. I love my child, but now I'm saying, what an awesome creation of God. When I look at you now, I say, my, you're not just a, you know, just a body. Taking up space. You're a creation of God. It gives me a greater appreciation for you. <laughs> maybe it'll give you a better appreciation for me. And maybe it'll give us even a greater appreciation for this awesome God. Inorganic material. This scientist says, <clears throat> he talks about ex exponential bits of information. With me? Exponential means that the previous number is squared. Right? What, what do you do when you square something? Three times three is nine, right? <clears throat> when you square something, you multiply the number by that same number. Which takes you to the next exponential number. Do you understand? I'm not saying one and then two. I'm saying, come on. I'm saying three, then nine. And then nine times nine, eighty-one. That brings you to the, come on. Say three, first step, first exponential number, three. Next one is nine, that's number two. Next number is 81, that's number three exponential number. 81 times 81 is the number four exponential number. Do you understand? Hallelujah, I was the worst bad person in the world. But when I teach the Bible, there's something that just comes to me, gives me understanding. So now do you understand ex exponential exponential bits of information? Are you ready? <clears throat> so this scientist said that the whole creation has a certain number 
bits of information in it. Do you understand? The inorganic. Say that's non-living. Oh, I love this. Man, this is so good. Hallelujah. I just stand up and say, Hooray, thank you, Jesus. He said, listen, you got to hear this very carefully. He said, the whole planet Earth, the whole planet has 160 exponential bits of information. Only 160 exponential bits of information. Do you understand? <clears throat> well, that's pretty awesome when you think about it. What we I uh, showed you, 3 and then 9, and then time, 9 times 9, 81, that's the third exponential number. And then 81 times 81, that'd be the fourth, and then whatever that is, is the fifth. Okay, you with me now? You understand? <clears throat> Planet Earth has 160 exponential Expo, help me. I'm saying it right, exponential, right? <sighs> the whole solar system only jumps up 10 exponential uh, numbers. The whole solar system has 170 exponential bits of information in it. The whole solar system. And then the whole universe, he says, the whole universe, material universe, non-living material universe, the whole universe has 235 exponential bits of information. The whole universe. And the secular scientists want you to believe that we, we came from the universe, that we evolved from this planet. Let's see if that's a possibility. Hallelujah. Say living material. The smallest form of life, protein molecule, has 1,500 exponential bits of information. Six to seven times the amount of the whole universe in one protein molecule. The smallest form of life smallest form of life has more bits of information in it than the whole universe. Then they jumped up and they studied bacteria. Let's say like E. coli. E. coli bacteria, they, they found to have 7 million exponential bits of information in an E. coli bacteria. Well, they didn't stop there. They went a little further and they studied the cell. This scientist studied the cell. And in the cell, there were 20 billion exponential bits of information in only one cell in your body. So next time somebody tells you that you evolved from, you know, you came up from a sewage somewhere... <laughs> You tell them, no way. The whole universe only has 235 exponential bits of information. I, come on, one cell in my body's got 20 billion. There's no way I could have come something from somewhere and something that was less than one cell in my body. So that's why the secular scientists have to have this long earth thing. The man, you know, he's been here 15 billion years. You know why? Come on. Because they believe it would take that long to become, to come out of the sewage and become what you are. The problem is, 15 billion years isn't enough time. Because even if there was all eternity, scientists say that in eternity, you could not come from 235 exponential bits of information to 20 billion in one cell. It is a total, it is an impossibility. There goes your evolution. There goes your... In the beginning, no wonder... So there has to be, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It, I'm telling you, it is scientifically impossible for you to have evolved. You're too complex. And He did all of that so He could have a bride. 
and so he could have somebody in his image. Is everybody here? He loves you that much. I'm talking about in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that same Word, that same God, took on human flesh and walked among us. The God who did all of that that I just told you about, that God walked among us because He said, I've got to get a bride. I'm looking for a, a mate. That's, I'm telling you, it's a love story from Genesis 1-1 all the way to Revelation 22. I believe 21. It's a love story of Jesus Christ for somebody. You're important to God. Never get this idea that you're a nobody and you're not worth anything. God created you. You're a highly specialized person. He's awesome. I said he's awesome. He's awesome. And next week, hallelujah. We're going to get into light. God said, let there be light. We're going to see some neat stuff. You see, God, God had to create this earth like it was. With water, on a spinning globe, a spinning sphere of water. And then he moved on it. He had to do all of that for a reason. If he didn't do it, you wouldn't even be alive tonight. But he did it the way he did it. With a plan and a purpose in mind for you to be his bride. Hallelujah, stand. Give God praise. I'm glad I know him. Hallelujah. When I see how awesome he is. Now, now, question I got is, did anybody get anything out of what I just shared with you? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> see, all these scientists are doing are just verifying what the Word has already said. <clears throat> the Word of God is the authority. But they're saying, hey, let me, let's show you how. And I'll show you in the Word of God that God wants you to know. He wants you to know. Come on. Aren't you glad He created you in His image? How many of y'all like art? Hallelujah. Why do you like art? God put that in you. How many of y'all like music? Why do you like music? God put that in you. You know, I'm going to tell you something. It's nonsense for somebody to stand behind a pulpit and say, don't go to an art show. That's bad. No, that's stupid to say that. That's ignorance. God put art in you, man. Come on, somebody. See, there, I believe things if I told y'all, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't God good? Whoa, hallelujah. I like to do things, go places. Oh, no, y'all say sin. No, I no, can't do that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. It's about time we grow up. Because everything is not wrong that is enjoyable in this life. Because God put it inside of you. He put a desire for music. He put a desire for... I'm not talking about corrupted and filth. I'm talking about pure things. You got that from God. Hallelujah. How many of y'all ever seen a monkey writing a song? Oh, yeah, some of y'all seen monkeys writing songs. Hallelujah. Which monkey was writing? How many of y'all ever heard saw a bird writing a song? Now, they can sing, but they can't write a song because they're not in the image of God. See, I, I, see, I got about 15, 20 pages worth of notes I can preach to you tonight. But I'm not. I, I want you to understand what I gave you. And we're going to go on. We're going to creation. We'll explain light and the energy and the way God moved upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. I want to know everything, man. I want to know everything. 
We, I'm going to tell you again, we need a little cerebral Christianity walking around on this earth. We need some people that know what's going on. Not just people that are emotional all the time. And I thank God for emotion. But if you don't have cerebral understanding. Glory to God. Oh, it's a miracle, isn't it? That we're fixing to go home. Brother Jason says, he don't know what to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, what? Might as well just clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> so how many of y'all going to come back next week? Yeah. How many of y'all want to know? Yeah. How many of y'all are relieved tonight that you didn't come from a sewer? A slime pit somewhere, you know? How many of y'all glad y'all didn't come from a monkey? Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the Lord. What do you think, brother? Isn't God awesome? Yeah, I'm talking to you, brother. Albert. Yeah. See, now when I look at a person, I see them differently. I look at my baby. I love my baby. Don't get me wrong, but I look at, oh, I said, God, this awesome, awesome thing. The process by which it came into this world, the, the dividing of the cells and it multiplying it over and over, and it just all of a sudden it's here. It's a miracle. It's powerful. It's more powerful than when God created the universe. It's more powerful. He put, well, I, see, I'm going to get to preaching, so Hallelujah. Y'all just go home and meditate, think, let God give you some revelation. Hallelujah. Get happy. Get excited about God. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.